Is Plantinga's um, evolutionary argument against naturalism any good? And <laughs> if it is, what are the answers to the main objections and can it be used uh, in an informal context? Okay. Bill, do you, do you want to comment on... Me? Yeah, well, well, the evolutionary argument against naturalism. Could you, first of all, in a nutshell, explain <laughs> it? And, and then... Right. Well, as I... This is not something I've specialized on, but as I understand the argument, it's not an argument against naturalism uh, to show that it's false. What it is, it's an argument designed to show that naturalism could never be rationally affirmed. And the idea there is that if naturalism were true, then our cognitive faculties are not aimed at truth, but they're aimed at survival. And in order to survive, your beliefs don't need to be true. They just need to sort of get you through. And you could, there could be any number of ways in which your beliefs could be false, but they would produce behavior that would have survivability value. So the idea is that if naturalism were true, our cognitive faculties will have been shaped by um, factors that are not truth aimed, but simply survivability, survival aimed. And that this should undermine our confidence in our cognitive faculties, that they really are producing preponderantly true beliefs. The probability is that many of the beliefs, much of the beliefs that we hold wouldn't be true, even if they help us survive. But then that would undermine our confidence in naturalism itself, because that is a conclusion of these same cognitive faculties, so that naturalism would be self-undermining. One could never have any confidence that naturalism were true because it's shaped by cognitive faculties which are probably unreliable. So that's the argument. So that's the argument. Would that be how you understand it, Tim? Would that be an accurate summary or I you understand it, it differently? Accurate summary, but the question then that would arise is, are, uh, is the epistemic warrant that we have for our beliefs simply the fact that they are produced by faculties that are producing a agreeably high proportion of truths over falsehoods, or does it have something more intrinsic to do with the evidence accessible to the individual? And so, the, but actually, the way that you just put it does uh, lead me to maybe modify my statement to this extent. If one accepts epistemic externalism, then I think Flanagan's version of the argument does pose a problem for the externalist. But I do think that it's tightly bound up with that internalist-externalist dispute, which is a, a really live issue. Yeah. We'll let them sort that out afterwards. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it, it is a somewhat technical question, uh, and we got somewhere with that. Anyone with any easier questions? Um, 